In the past, places that stood out from their surroundings were usually associated with myths and legends. Kyoja is one of these places, where the belief is that there is an underwater city under the sea. Fishermen used to notice that their nets were getting torn, as if they were snagged onto the ancient remains of something. Here are the submerged colors of Kyoja. A completely unexpected world. From the most vivid red to the most tenuous mauve. It's as if the sea had absorbed the colors of the sunset sky. Formed only a few thousand years ago, they are essentially of three kinds. Blocks of rock formed through the cementation of sediments by the action of methane gas seeping up from the lagoon floor. There is not much escaping here, but there are other places where there's a lot more. Slabs of rock caused by the sand of a beach compacting and submerged now because of subsidence or the sea level rising. Organogenous rock formed by the action of building organisms, very much like tropical coral reefs, and growing on a solid substratum which in this case is the vases of a sunken Roman ship. An extraordinary find in the high Adriatic of just a few years ago. This is the profile of the naturally rugged seabed being explored by a traditional echo sounder used to detect the tenue, typical calcareous formations on the lagoon bed. The modern side-scan sonar, on the other hand, which we can see being towed by a boat, explores the bottom and shows it like a terrestrial image from a satellite. It takes in an area that is hundreds of meters across. This is the sonar image of a rocky zone off Kyoja. The dark line in the center separates the part to the right and the left of the boat, corresponding to the position and direction of the sonar. The semicircular hollow at the top of the picture, created by the different heights of the surface, looks like an old riverbed. It's not easy to read these images, but we can see the details of the rocky ridges. Let's go and see a friend, a conger eel that we've known for over four years now. It's the kind of fish that lives in a den, so it's difficult to see it by day. Anyway, this one comes out to see us, and he often stays with us for the whole day. His behavior is a conditioned reflex. He knows that we have brought him food, and so he's really nice to us. He doesn't hide how curious he is, and the fact that he wants to play, and we often have to push him away when he gets in the way. He's not frightened at all. It's us that are a bit frightened of him sometimes. They say that they bite, but we've never seen him get nasty. If anything, he's so gentle with us that when we give him food, he sucks it in rather than biting on it. He lets us touch him and stroke him without any problem. We would be very unhappy if some fisherman followed us and caught him.
Polychaeti worms are moving flowers. There are hundreds of them on these tenue, of various shapes, colors, and sizes. When you touch them, they take fright and close up. Another inhabitant of the Tenue are sponges, again of all sorts of shapes and colors. They grow side by side, all squeezed up. They are all tight up together and form a beautiful carpet, a world bristling with life. This biodiversity makes up a unique and extraordinary world. The closeness of the river and all the plankton makes the water murky. This doesn't always mean pollution. On the contrary, sometimes the fact that it's not clear can be explained by the abundance of nutritional elements that enrich the sea and consequently its life. A scallop camouflaged on the bottom. When it feels danger approaching, it escapes. It has only two enemies. Starfish, which get inside the shell and eat it, and man. This undersea world is full of brilliant camouflage experts, so clever that very often we are not aware of what's going on around us. There are examples of extraordinary harmony between living animals and the environment that the eye cannot manage to see. The greatest camouflage experts are the octopus and the cuttlefish. Their bodies go all the colors that they find around them. What they do is camouflage themselves to prey on other animals and stop other animals from preying on them. The shellfish that live on the bottom are no better. The organisms that cover the rocks often cover their bodies and claws completely. Many of them live in symbiosis with other animal forms. Fish also, especially scorpion fish, camouflage themselves to become invisible in the environment that surrounds them. A blenny changes into a sponge branch. The lobster is the king of the tenue and can grow up to five kilos in weight. There have been far fewer of them recently, both because of natural causes and the anoxia crises of 1977 and 1988 and because of poaching by professional fishermen and underwater divers. 
This lobster is definitely going to be surprised to see a sardine instead of a harpoon. It's very difficult to see a lobster at the moment that it is shedding its crust. At the end of this particular striptease, it looks as if there are two lobsters on the bottom. The only thing missing from the crust that has been shed is the eyes. We are trying to repopulate the sea with lobsters by freeing some small ones on this tenure. This environment, which is rich in nutriment and irregular rocks, is especially suitable for shelter and food to many species of fish, which, not by chance, come here to spawn. This is a lesser spotted dogfish egg, and if you put it up against the light you can see the embryo. In August, the TV program Linea Blu again mentioned the idea of creating a marine sanctuary off Chioggia. The images of the extraordinary richness and beauty of the sea bottom persuaded the local authorities to act. On the evening of the 9th of December, in the auditorium San Nicolò, the mayor, Fortunato Guarnieri, in the name of the Chioggia Town Council, declared in front of the many citizens packed into the hall that the request for a marine sanctuary had been officially sent to the Ministry of the Environment. The images of the lagoon bed, so varied and coloured, show us a world that in some ways is similar to ours. The fog on the lagoon is like floating in water. The narrow alleys, the rifts in the tenue, the bridges of the Canal Vena, the lobster dens, the walk along the Corso, fish swimming up and down over the rocks. The colour of the sails, the various colours of sponges. Legend and reality merge here, and as if in a surreal vision, the sea takes on the submerged colours of Chioggia.